Morning everyone from a very rainy day here in the Bay of Islands. Um, I am getting ready to paint some lampshades so I thought I'd grab the camera and record it. Um, you may have seen that pop up on our stories last night. Um, I've tried to be really disciplined and not get into any paint projects until we've unpacked most of our boxes. We've been unpacking for about a week I suppose. Um, but there are a lot of boxes here. Um, we're just living amongst boxes everywhere. So taking a little break from unpacking and getting into a small paint project. I mean, it's a lampshade, so it's not really considered a paint project really, is it? So well, that's what I've told Daryl anyways. Um, so this is the lampshade here. And I thought um, it'll be a good one to record because, you know, we get lots of queries about painting lampshades. Um, although these aren't a full shade, these are, um, they go up on the wall. So there's plastic on the inside, kind of screws in. But... Um, made very much like a lampshade. So lampshades are really quick and easy project. They're really simple to do. The only ones that you need to watch out for are those vintage lampshades where they've got pleats. Um, if the pleats are nice and taut, it should be fine. But if they're a little bit loose, because you're going to be wetting the fabric with some paint, um, there's, you know, it's a liquid, um, those pleats may not sit as perfectly. And also those vintage lampshades where they've got ruffles, in them they don't work as well but if it's a solid lampshade like this where the um the cotton or the linen whatever fabric is nice and taut um sitting there nice and nice and tight then it should be fine so i want to neutralize these um black shades and i'm going to use today tar which is a lovely earthy torpy gray kind of color I don't have my paints out yet, my studio's not set up yet, so I've just sneaked this one out of um, Daryl's area, so it's a, just a sample pot. Um, but generally with lampshades, you could get away with a sample pot. Sometimes, um, you know, with the bigger shades, you might you might go the one litre. <clears throat> the one litre is always better value anyways, but um, I'm going to open it up and let's get started. And I'll kind of talk as we go through. So... There we go. I'm going to give it a really good stir. It's a thick, creamy, rich consistency. It's very easy to stir, even though it does have that consistency. So you can see. There. And I've got my Style Mister brush. So this is a size, this is one I just grabbed, size 18, um, which is great. You can use a size 18 or a size 20, it doesn't really matter. And generally, if you're painting, um, if you're painting upholstery or a, a fabric that is a little bit thicker, um, test it first in an area that you know, like maybe like under a chair or under um, somewhere where you can't see it, and see how the paint takes to it. If it absorbs it, it should be fine. Um, keep going. If the paint's kind of sitting on top, then a really good tip is just to mist it. Um, quickly with just a little bit of water. Don't drench it completely, just a light mist, just so that the paint can absorb through the fibres. But because this fabric here, I've just had a, a really good look at it just before I jumped on the camera, it's quite thin. Um, so I think the paint will be fine without watering it. So we'll give it a go. I've got a little spray bottle here if I need it. Um, but I actually think this one will be fine. So I'm going to start from one end and I'm just going to put my paint here so you can see it. There we go. It's been a while since I've been on done a video. Um, so a little feeling a little bit rusty. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint it and just see how it goes. Yeah, that's absorbing really, really well. So <clears throat> I'll come up closer. I'm loading up quite a bit of paint, nice wet paint, and then I'm spreading it out. I didn't want to water it down because <clears throat> if I don't water it down, it's gonna be um, you know, on my first coat, it'll be nice and even. And just using my brush to really just kind of get in there and brush it into the fibers. So you can see this is tar over a black shade. And, you know, the coverage is really, really good. It's absorbing in really beautifully. Cottons and linens and natural fibers um, will always paint up a lot easier. It's a real no fuss. Um, things like velvet and stuff. Um, uh, doable if it's got a short nap, suede is easy to paint, um, but yeah, you can kind of just see it changing before your eyes. So really just kind of working my paint into the fabric, loading up, just maybe if I 
I'll go there, you can see. Loading up and just spreading it out. There we go. It's the funny thing about, you know, moving into an existing home where you're moving, you feel like, at this point, you feel like you're kind of moving into somebody else's home. It doesn't feel like yours yet, you know, because obviously the home is set up for, um, you know, a different family's kind of lifestyle and the way that they live. And I suppose when you're moving into a home, once you've placed, pulled out all your furniture and kind of roughly placed them, it's about tweaking the space to make it suit your family and the way that you live in your lifestyle. Um, and at this point, we're just at the stage of like just plonking furniture anywhere and everywhere um, and not really sure what we're gonna wear, you know, trying to just figure out the space and the layout, which is really the first step. Um, I've got heaps of furniture to, to paint um, because as I mentioned in, as we mentioned in the other video with Daryl, nothing really works. Um, so um, it's a big place, it's, it's five bedrooms, um, it's got, uh, a full kitchen and then another kitchen downstairs and then um, a kitchenette as well uh, three bathrooms so there's a lot to paint um, so hopefully you'll be able to see some really cool um, projects and content coming out over the next year maybe two years I don't know how long it's gonna take us um, but you know we're just taking it day by day so you can see there just a little bit more left and it's looking really lovely um you know like magic i'm just working it in so one of one of the things i'm just watching out for as i'm painting it is that there's no real thick areas of paint so i really want to spread it out quite evenly the style mister brush works beautifully with the artisan paints when we um were making the paints or developing the paints we wanted we love these brushes and we wanted to make sure that it performed really well with the brushes because we know that a lot of our customers already have them. Um, so, you know, it's just, it just controls the paint really beautifully. So I'm just going back over now and just making sure that it's all nice and even, spreading it out. Get a little bit through there. I've got two of these to do. Um, and I'm using tar premium chalk paint because it's going to be a good base for my metallic that I'm planning on doing. So I'm planning on doing the shades in um, soft gold metallic cream. So that'll be hopefully quite interesting for you to watch. It should give it a nice metallic-y kind of sheen and tar is a really, really good base for that. Um, so that's why I'm doing it in tar, but also um, it's quite neat to be able to see, you know, a black shade. I've got one here before a black shade um, being transformed into a neutral shade. So, um, yeah, that's all there is to it. So I'm going to leave that to dry and I'm going to keep painting the other one. I mean, the neat thing about the paint is that um, you can, you don't really have to manipulate the paint too much. The actual paint itself you just it's just a change in technique um you know whether you want to use it to paint upholstery or fabric like i am today or whether you want to paint furniture it's just a matter of the amount that you load up on your brush and how you spread it out you can see i'm kind of brushing it in all kind of in all directions because i'm working the paint into the fibers um, and then running my paintbrush back over just to even it out as I go along just spreading it out kind of nice and thin and your style mister brush um, will allow you to do that so I don't know, maybe I'm not close enough you never know with these videos until afterwards don't you so as to whether you can actually see um, so hopefully you can see that I'll just do the last little bit right up close See that? And then, see how it's kind of, and then I'm using my brush to really work it in to the fibres. Even go circular motions and then level it off so it's nice and even. And that side too. like that. 
So I'm um, just going to do the edges because I am going to paint the edges as well. That. You can see with this one, it's already starting to dry. You can see a little bit of the black fibers coming through, but it creates depth in that paint finish. And it actually makes it look very natural in terms of, you know, um, a textile because when you're looking at when you look at fabric and you look at cottons and linens they're not necessarily one flat color and if I blocked that out um, in one flat color it's going to start looking more like maybe um, suede or something like that mm, rather than a fabric so if I was going to leave these lamps if I was going to just um, if I just wanted to lighten it and this was the right colour, I'd be done. I wouldn't be doing another coat on this. Um, you know, as long as it's kind of dried evenly. If it hasn't, then you may do an, another coat on it just to even it out. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, that's pretty awesome. And then that's the one I've just done. It's still a little bit wet. This one's drying a little bit more, so you can see it's a little bit going a little bit lighter. Um, so you would normally, after this, you would just leave it to dry naturally if you can um i'm going to hair dry it which is really what you shouldn't be doing um but because we're doing it on a video and also um i've got other things to do today um like unpacking i'm just going to speed it up with a bit of a hair dryer if you can't wait for it to dry and you decide that you want to hair dry it you just need to really be careful with um you know moving the hair dryer around so it is paint so if you localize the hair dryer on one spot um it's got it the paint might crack so you know where you can leave it to dry naturally it doesn't take long it's about you know what did i say 30 maybe 30 40 minutes um just run your hand over it and you'll feel it it'll feel nice and dry um but i'm just going to quickly hair dry it Okay, so my little rags flying off, off on the side there. We're doing the painting on our office desk, which obviously needs, a, this is, it's going to need painting as well. So it's a really massive table um, and it's a big hunk of wood. Um, it's actually come from work. So, and we've used it, put it in this room, but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to painting this desk, just haven't decided yet what colour. So here it is, nice and dry. So pretty. So I just need a base coat because I'm doing a metallic. I just need a base coat of the chalk paint down so I can actually do my metallics on it. Um, if you, this was the finish that you were going for on a lampshade, you can leave it um, like this. It's really lovely and matte and, and looks really kind of, um, you know, very natural. Um, on furniture, obviously, with premium chalk, with our artisan chalk paints, um, on furniture you'll need to wax and seal it because often you know you'll be eating over it you need to clean it down you need to wipe it down you want it to repel liquids and so forth um, because you're using it in a different way so you would normally uh, wax it also on upholstery because you're sitting on it and all that sort of stuff um, you'll want to wax that as well but because it's a lampshade we're not going to be eating off it it's just decorative um, you can just leave it so you after that you're done so that literally took just looking at the clock, um, 18 minutes for me to do. Um, I've just left this one to dry net. Oh, it's almost dry. Um, so yeah, so that's me talking and everything from start to finish was about 18 minutes, um, which is really quick. So for some new lampshades, and it's a great way to reuse them. I mean, the whole idea um, around this project um, here um, that Daryl and I are doing is that we're going to try and reuse everything rather than buying new things or throwing things away. Um, I mean, there'll be a few things that we'll replace, um, but overall we will be kind of just utilizing what's here and showing um, you how to kind of refresh, redesign um, things that may be around your home. So, all done. I'm gonna leave the other one to dry naturally, so I'm just gonna put that to one side. So maybe by the time we've done this next step on this one, that one might be dry. So now I'm going to grab um, my artisan metallic cream. 
So this one is soft gold. And I'm just going to give it, let's see, a really, really good stir. You want to stir it really well, even if you open it up and it looks like it's ready to go. Um, a hundred percent, the the metallic creams won't be, you know, or there'll be pigments and stuff down the bottom that you really need to kind of combine together to give it, you know, bring out the color. Otherwise, if you don't stir it well enough, you'll use it. The color will be quite different, and when you get down to the bottom, the color will be totally different. So it's really important to give it a really, really good stir. It's been so awesome to see what people have been doing with these too. Um, you know, from painting chairs and pipes and all sorts. So yeah, really neat to see. So there we go. So this is soft gold, which is a really lovely, I suppose, soft gold. Um, and I'm going to use my spalter brush. So these are new, reasonably new. Um, they're really lovely. They're, we bought them in for the metallics because it does help to create a really lovely flawless metallic. The bristles are so nice and soft, it just kind of blends it out perfectly. And it works really well when you know, you're know you brushing it over the premium chalk paints. It's also really great for blending colors um, when you're actually painting furniture as well, if you're doing some layered looks and that. So the spalter brush is a really lovely tool. Um, you want to look after them, but you can see you know, the bristles are super soft and um, yeah, just really lovely to work with. So, pretty sure that's dry. Yeah. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just dip my spalter brush. Oh, you can't see. Just dip my spalter brush into my soft gold. So the premium chalk paint has absorbed into the um, into the linen, the black linen shade, and it's got a porous surface, which is perfect for me to place my metallics on. But if you wanted to do a metallic shade, if I place this straight on to the, the fabric that was there before, it's not going to work. It needs premium chalk paint underneath the design to work in together. Um, and by using tar as a base, it should give my um, soft gold even a cooler tone. So, you know, depending if I wanted my soft gold to be a little bit warmer, um, I'd probably use a warmer color as a base color. So you can change... Um, the metallic slightly based on the base color that you're using. So here we go. So I'm going to just go like so, and then I'm just going to, can you see? Oh, yeah. Um, just work it backwards and forwards, giving it an even kind of coating. And the spalter brush is so fine that it's just kind of going into all the fabric anyways. There we go. You can see that. So really So if you're looking at doing metallics, as long as you've got a base coat of the um, Artisan Chalk Paint, then you can pretty much do metallics on anything. And I thought um, I wanted to do something a little bit different with these shades um, and go with a metallic. And I thought um, that'll kind of be quite nice in the room that we're going to do. It's really actually quite hard painting and talking at the same time. So you're kind of multitasking, trying to concentrate on what you're doing as well as talking. So um, if you see moments of silence, it's because I'm thinking or just distracted by what I'm doing. So there we go. You can see. So all we want to do is just keep brushing out that metallic so it's nice and even on there. But how cool is that? I'm going to keep going. might bring it up closer when I do the next section so you can see as well. So I'm loving all the comments that are coming up on um, our posts. Um, you know, it's really lovely to see some familiar names um, pop up. So thank you for following. And it's, um, yeah, like Daryl said in the other video, it actually feels okay. Um, I was a bit 
anxious about, you know, opening up everything that we're doing in this home, because obviously, we, uh, you know, we're quite private people. So yeah, it did give me a little bit of anxiety, but yeah, like Daryl says, it does actually feel okay because, you know, we know a lot of the people, um, a lot of, you know, you out there that are commenting in that, you know, from our days in retail. Um, and it's nice to see some familiar names pop up. So there's that soft gold over tar, really lovely and soft and neutral, and it's just really quite subtle. Um, so I'm just gonna come up close so you can actually see what I'm doing. So, there we go, so just working it, getting my spalter brush and just kind of, you know, making sure it's nice and thin, nice and even, and then right at the end I'm taking the pressure off my brush and then I'm just going to, you know, blend it out so it's nice and even. So, that's pretty much it. A really good tip if you're painting lampshades and actual lampshades, you know, around a lamp base, is actually um, when you're doing not so much your first coat, but when you're doing your final coat, um, put it back on, turn on the light, so you can actually see the areas that you've missed. Um, because, you know, although it looks beautiful during the day when you go to turn your light on, you may have missed some areas and you'll be able to see that. So on that last coat, just um, yeah, pop it on. And I'm going to do the same with this one. So I'm going to do two coats of the um, soft gold to make it nice and dense. And then on the last coat, I'll pop it on, on the wall and um, then see if I've missed any areas and just touch up those areas. So I'm just going to... So that's pretty much the whole shade done in the soft gold. I'm absolutely loving that. It's so cool. Um, and then I'm just going to do the edges. So what I love about the whole, um, everything about decorative painting is just, it's just imagination. Once you have the tools um, and you know the system that you're using or that, you know, the system of like waxing, um, painting fabric, metallics, how it all kind of works and together, then you really have the tools to like transform anything, um, especially with the premium chalk paints being able to adhere to any surface pretty much any surface um, and the new metallic range gives you a whole different scope of um, possibilities and then you've got your velvet lux which you know um, you can redesign all the outdoors um, areas like kitchens I do have quite a few kitchens to paint um, as well I gave um, there was a little sneak peek last night um, on our stories of um, half of the kitchen being unpacked um, and I'll share more on that a little bit later um, but yeah the velvet lux is what we're going to be using to paint the kitchen I'm tossing and turning between two, two neutrals at the moment so I haven't decided that so I suppose every time I'm unpacking a room I'm like oh we'll use this color and this color and this color and um, yeah just mulling a lot of ideas together and once we get closer to the time of uh, of painting we'll create a few boards and mood boards and stuff and, and share them with you before we um do the project so the edges took longer than the actual surface um so that is my soft gold metallic shade So I'm just going to leave that to dry naturally, unless it doesn't dry fast enough and I'll just see, oh it's almost dry, it's just slightly damp. So I'm just going to quickly dry that off. Yeah, that's pretty much dry. So I will just quickly do this one as well. And hopefully in that time this one will dry give my metallic cream a really good stir because in between the projects the pigments may have settled a little bit more so I just want to keep stirring it and making sure it floats to the top 
so that everything is evenly dispersed. So I'm going to pick up my metallic again um, and we'll maybe this time go a little bit closer. It's such a big table so it's kind of like awkward for me to lean over but um, I will try. So super excited about these metallics too. I mean I've got so many ideas and just never enough time to really paint and record. Um, but we're really hoping that moving to the Bay of Islands here we're going to have that time um, to balance all of that a little bit more. Um, it's so quiet here too like, like all I can hear are cicadas and maybe a couple of birds. It's super, super quiet, something, it's really nice, um, you yeah, know, very kind of relaxing and calming, which is um, really great for us. We have the um, neighbours, our neighbour who's a farmer, um, or one of our neighbours, has brought his cows over to the paddock um, to graze on, which is awesome, because we haven't sorted out a right arm lawnmower or anything like that yet. Um, obviously, you know, things that you need, um, but we are, so the cows are kind of mowing the lawns for us at the moment, which is cool. So. I don't actually have all my tools here yet. I've still got a little bit more to bring up from Auckland, um, from the warehouse there, the warehouse there is, so I've got, um, my video stands and stuff to bring up so I'm just leaning the phone well you know I've just put the phone up on a little stand thing to record this so hopefully it's watchable um how cool is that so you just see it change before your eyes it's so great like if you're impatient like I am you know to just like I'm 32 minutes in on the video um you know, 32 minutes later to see it completely change. Like, there's something really satisfying about it. And, you know, it's very addictive. And, um, you know, it's, our, you know, our regulars or customers who, um, those of you who have been, you know, painting for a while along with us, you'll know the feeling. But, you know, when you can transform something pretty quickly and just see it kind of change before your eyes is... Um, does become very addictive so once you've done these two shades you know or once you've done a couple of shades you're like looking around the house going what else can I paint and what else can I change the spalter brush is amazing um, I know many of you have them uh, because we're, it's, it's been hard for us to keep up with demand um, and they're sold all through our retailers as well um we sell them online on the website as well but um the re our retailers have told us how popular they've been um out there so we will have them come back in i think some of the retailers still have a couple if you're after them as well So I'm just going to do the edges to finish off. The, if you're doing edges like this, you could do the um, use the angled brush as well. So they're quite good for doing edges as well. I don't have mine here. Mine's in the box somewhere um, under my ten boxes of studio patch for the studio. So. Hoping to unpack that, unpack that this weekend so I can get into some decent painting. Cool. So, another idea I had. I was going to wait and see how it looked once it was finished first. So there's my um, shade, my second one. It's my first one. That's dried a little bit more so you can see it's the colors a little bit more kind of finished that's still wet um 
looking really, really lovely. But what I was thinking as I was looking at these shades last night was see the little rim, see the little stitching that it's got there. I was going to do that in silver. I really love mixed metals, um, doing mixed metallics, and I really love doing that for my clients as well because it gives you the freedom of dressing with either or gold or silver. So where we can, um, I do like to do to use you know both the silver or the gold together in um, different ways in an interior space because it just gives you that real, real freedom and anything that's you know too gold like in a room where it's gold 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 it just it looks flat look it's overpowering so it's nice to create um, if you're working with metallics you know to do mixed metals um, it's a really lovely look and it gives you a lot of freedom in terms of dressing your space so oh I've forgotten which one's the first one I did now um, which one's more dry Where's that one You'll be able to tell because you've been watching and I've been talking and not concentrating. Um, so I'm just going to quickly dry this off and do my second coat so you can see. Alright, so um, I'm going to do another coat. And you can see as I turn it, it's pretty even. There's just a couple of areas that are kind of like, I don't know if you can see, just through there that I want a little bit. Um, I've missed just a little bit. I kind of angle it, you might be able to see it. But I also want the metallic to be just a little bit more dense as well. So it gives me a chance to kind of even off things. Um, but if you were happy with that level of metallics on your shade, then you would just touch up the areas that you've missed, just blend it out and you're done, rather than doing a full coat. But I want it to be a little bit stronger, so I'm going to do another coat. So the chalk paint part is pretty quick, you just want to do a quick base coat and it's this part that you'll probably, you know, you'll spend a little bit more time doing um, and taking more care I suppose. So I'm going to start on this side, second coat for soft gold. Using my spelter brush to just even it off. Can you see? I don't know if you can see. The um, metallic frame is really, it's real glidey, um, so it's great for things like this, it just kind of glides on and gives you that, makes it easy. So you can see, oh here you can see, if I hold it like that, two coats, one coat. You can see the metallic's a lot more dense on the second coat. And then when you're kind of blending out, just make sure to take, little, you know, don't press down hard, just little pressure, just to kind of blend it using, letting the um, spalter brush do its job. So I'm pressing down quite firm to get it into everything. And then once I've kind of decided that it's all covered, taking the pressure off my brush and then just kind of blending it like that. And I'm done. And then I move on to the next section and the same thing. Blending. This is kind of the finishing coat, um, so it is where you kind of want to, you know, concentrate. Cool. So, there's my two coats of soft gold. And do the edges, although I'm going to be doing that in silver, so maybe I won't do it, just leave that. So I'm going to quickly do the other one, and then um, 
I didn't bring the silver up because I wasn't sure whether I was going to do it. I wanted to kind of see it first kind of come together, um, which is often kind of what I do. Um, if I feel like it needs more, I'll, um, I will kind of change the concept just slightly. And it's how you should be working at home as well. You know, sometimes you finish a project or finish a piece of furniture or whatever it is, and you feel like it just needs something more. Um, and the beauty is that because you're doing it yourself, you can. So, you know, whether it's a little bit of gilding or um, another coloured wax or whatever it is, um, but you should be open to changing or adjusting your idea slightly um, as you're doing it as well. And there's no kind of right or wrong with this. I mean, you can just keep just keep painting over it until you're happy with it. So it's, everything is pretty quick to do. It's not like you have to. Um, you know, it's going to take you hours or hours or anything. Just get off the pressure off my brush and blending it in. I'm talking too much now. Okay, so just this last section, loading on. And then taking the pressure off my brush to blend it in on that wet edge. And this side as well. So that is it, done. So there's my um, second coat. There's the other one that's still drying. So now I'm going to pause the camera and come back because I need to run and go and get the silver, which is quite far away from the house. So I'm not gonna run while the video is going because you'll be waiting here for ages. So I'm going to um, pause the camera, put my shoes on, run over go grab some silver and what we're going to do is we're just going to um edge it so where where there's see that seam we're just going to edge that in silver in the metallic silver cream and i'm going to try and find an angle brush as well because i need one urgently for this project so i'll be back i'm just going to pause it and um, come back to you okay so we're back um sorry about that so i've got my silver metallic cream just opened it it's in a terrible state the jar um and i ex actually found that i left the jar open last night so i thought it would be quite good to show you so because i left my jar open there's a skin that's on there um so i'm just going to pick that out um hopefully you won't ever leave your uh the jar the lid off your metallic creams that's a real big no-no um but i'm just going to pull the skin out put it on the rag and give it a really good stir and it should combine all back up fine but you know i just thought it'd be quite good to show because these things happen sometimes um but you want to always keep the lid of these metallic creams really tightly shut wipe the the edge of your jar um, after you've used it. Um, if you don't, the metallics are really strong, you may find that it's really hard to open the jar back up next time. If you do find that, just give it a little um, bang on the edge of the table around the lid just to loosen it up and then you can open it up again. Um, but generally, if you kind of just wipe the rim, you know, keep the lid tightly shut, you're away. So I found the angled brush. If you don't know what that is, it's this little pretty looking brush um, so that I can kind of cut in and do the edges in the silver. So if you are at home and you want to do some edging like this, the best thing to do is to mask it off. So mask it off with low um, tack masking tape because you don't want to rip the paint finish off um, because it's, you know, it's new um, and it hasn't fully cured yet. It's just dry. Um, so give it a little mask off and then paint the edges off. But I'm just going to freehand it um, because 
I don't know where the masking tape is and I can freehand it so I'm just going to go ahead and do that and then you, you should be able to see the end result. So I'm just going to dip it into my metallic cream, the silver, and I'm how am I going to do this so you can see it because I really need to concentrate as well. Um, okay. see it and I'm just going to go over I'm not doing a coat of chalk paint for this because it's literally just going over metallic paint so it's no different to doing a third coat on it I may need to do two coats of the silver to block out the soft gold or if I like the soft gold kind of coming through then I'll just leave it and I think I will because I can see it I can see the soft gold coming through underneath which is really pretty see hopefully you can see it's really subtle but it just gives it a little bit of a contrast I'm just gonna do the edge here the angle brush is really great for what you know precision precision oh, I always really struggle to say that word um, but you know for cutting in around drawers and so forth really lovely brush it's got the same bristles as the spalt brush so really fine bristles I don't know if you can see try and come a little bit closer no. so I'm just going to edge that line and as I'm doing it, I really love um, that first coat. I just, you can see a little bit of the soft gold underneath, but it's like predominantly silver. So I'm only going to do one coat. I thought I was going to do two, but I really like it like this. Really lovely. Just get kind of pops that edge. So you can see that one's got nothing on it. It just kind of defines the shape a little bit more. And it gives it that kind of mixed metallic kind of look to it. So I'm just going to finish off doing this side. So there we go. So it's really soft, the silver. I don't want it any stronger than that. I really love that. Um, if I bring it up close, you can kind of see it. It's just really, just edges that really nicely um, and gives it that mixed metallic kind of look versus that one there, which hasn't got it yet. So it makes a big difference. You know, those little detail, that little detailing. So when you're looking at pieces to do, um, whether it be furniture or decor, you're looking at the shape and how you can actually reinterpret that shape through using colour or metallics or the way that you detail it um, to make it really unique and bespoke, you know. Um, and you can kind of redesign and redo it to suit your home and your space. Not just that, if you're redoing your space like we are, we, we're not do, really doing anything to fit into anything because we actually need to recreate um, a look and feel that we want to um, in terms of our home so we're kind of really just going through and making it home and um, the way that we want it to so um, yeah so having these tools is really great you know we obviously know some people who make some paint um, and can access a whole bunch of them so it's it's obviously a lot easier for us um, and you know it's cool to be able to kind of share that um, the, the whole process with everybody as well so hopefully you can see that um, and I'll go on and do 
the next one um, off camera. You've already seen how that kind of works. So I will go ahead and finish off this and then actually put it back on the wall and take some photos and show you um, as well. But there we go. So a painted lampshade. I painted first in tar, um, premium chalk paint. Um, I used a sample pot. Um, I didn't water it down because it's a really thin um, th uh, piece of kind of linen, cotton, whatever it was. Um, and I just kind of used my Style Mister size 18 brush and spread it out um, as I went. And I did only just one coat um, of that. Only because I knew that I was going to be doing metallics over the top. If you were going to, if you wanted to transform it to more of a linen shade, linen looking shade. Tar is a really great colour. It's got that real natural kind of earthy um, feel to it. So you could go just one coat of tar um, and be done. And that's it. Your project's done. Um, if you wanted to do a metallic like this, then you do your coat of tar and then you run two coats of soft gold over it or one, depending on what you like. You can stop at any point. That's the beauty about this thing is that, you know, it's what you like. Um, I've done two coats, just to make it a little bit more dense, um, and then I've edged the edges in silver. So if you like that, you can do that as well. Um, if you don't, um, then don't do it. Leave it like that, and you're done. You're done at that point, or you can go a step further and do that. Um, if you don't, not into metallics, and you like the linen look, and you want to do some edging, there's no reason why you can't edge it in white. Um, you know, tar and white would be really, really lovely, um, a really lovely combination. The white will just kind of pop it a little bit. Um, but often these lampshades do have, um, you know, it's quite common for them to have a seam um, around the bottom and around the top. Um, and you can, you know, bring that detailing out if you choose to. So um, that's pretty much it, um, guys. So. A quick little project, um, second part of the video, I'm 13 minutes in, um, but I'm pretty much done, so I'm going to finish off the rest and, um, yeah, and just share the end results with you. I'd love to hear what you think um, about it, but, you know, just a nice, quick, kind of, I thought it would be quite a cool little project to record and just ease into um, with this new page, painting lampshades, before we really get into painting furniture and walls and stuff like that so i hope you enjoyed it um and i look forward to reading your comments all right thanks guys see ya bye